Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Um, again, thank you to all the new subscribers, mm -hmm. and if you haven't subscribed yet, please awesome. do thank so. Thank you. Um, we'd really appreciate it. And what's happening today? Today we have part two with the amazing Chris Edgerly. Did you watch part one? You need to. <laughs> here Let's we kick go. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Is it true or false that you got in trouble when you went on the Ariel's Undersea Adventure ride? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Did I mean, confess, what did you do? What did you do? Well, you before do, the ride, I guess the ride was uh, <laughs> soft opening. Yes. Yeah. And so, Pat Brady, my agent, the reason I have a career, yes. you know, she Love said, hey, Pat. yep, exactly. And she had some of her clients that had done voices for the rides. Like, we're all over that park. Between us and some of the other guys, we're on a few rides. Yeah. So, we went on the, the Little Mermaid ride. And we're up in the very first car in the front seat. <laughs> And Scuttle starts the ride, you know, oh, they're going to tell you a story about Ariel and the rest of the gang. And I just thought, oh, I'm gonna, not going to miss this. Took out my phone, started recording it. Oh, boy, that's not good. And it was just for me. You know, I didn't even have an nothing's, active Twitter nothing's account. Nothing's for you over yeah. there. Exactly, yeah. I know. So we go through the ride, have a blast. And then at the end of the ride, two smiling, young, fresh scrubbed faces greeted us and said, hey, we couldn't help but noticing on our security <laughs> cameras that you were recording the ride. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. See, yeah, you don't know this, but uh, yeah, I'm Scuttle. I said, yeah, that's great. Can we see your phone, please? I said, well, yeah, sure. It's just, we just have to erase this. I said, yeah, but, but I'm Scuttle. <laughs> That was my voice I was recording. Sure, like, kid. Yeah, I know, and uh -huh. that's great, and that's wonderful that you're scuttled. There you go. And so, wow. we had to erase it. Of course, now on YouTube, you can see the entire ride of from course. every conceivable angle. Yeah. Yes. So, they just didn't want to get an out before, but. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, that's understandable. Yeah. So, yeah, I, apparently, yeah, I like to push it with Disney a little bit. He's a rebel. A rebel. <laughs> you yeah. are a rebel. Um, no wonder they had to board you. Yeah. Well, while we're, <laughs> while we're on that note, I mean, I love, uh, I love Gobber. Thank you. Gobber is such a great character. He's great. I mean, I'm voice matching Craig Ferguson, but Craig Ferguson's great. If you're watching, you better be. It's, it's VO Buzz Weekly. Eh? <laughs> love Gobber. Sid Highland in Final yeah, Fantasy. Yeah, Final Fantasy, yeah. You have yeah. some very devoted... I there yeah that he's and, a kooky um, one that guy he's a yeah I mean he's he's got that uh, I always gave him kind of a redneck voice yeah you know yeah I mean he's he's uh, a lot of guys I grew up with just like said once they get a couple of bears in them you know there was a guy I went to school with up at University of Georgia he was from Appalachia mm -hmm. and he had a bit more of a country accent he used to tell me man last night I drank enough liquor to float a battleship that uh, well. <laughs> The Appalachians. That's a uh, yeah. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna right use that one. Yeah, later. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. But I've noticed that some of the most devoted and rabid fans are anime fans. Yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I made the mistake of posting a credit a little bit too early. Oops, no, you only for, did that once. That was only happened once. Yep. I put a. I did some dubbing for uh, Naruto, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, actually no, it was for the Final Fantasy thing. And before the movie got released, I just sort of put it up on IMDb that I was Sid Highwind. And uh -oh. Pat called me up and said, did you, uh -oh. did you put up your Sid uh -oh. Highwind credit? I said, yeah, yeah, because it's official, right? He goes, well, they haven't announced the cast Oopsie. yet. This is like back in 04, and I just didn't know that you didn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I thought, okay, I'll take it down. I mean, pfft, how big of a deal could it be? Nobody's going to know. And sure enough, there was a 14-page message board oh. already on some anime fan site about weighing in on your who the hell is Chris Edgerly oh boy. and why is he doing Sit High Wind and, and then someone found my original stand-up comedy headshot and put it up. This is what he looks like. <gasps> and they found my voiceover demo, snatched it offline and said, this is what he sounds like. He does orange juice commercials. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, it was a Tropicana spot. Yeah. That paid my okay, pension. Right? That, paid me that was my money, pension eh? credit <laughs> that year, buddy. You know, so yeah, I realized yeah. they do care. Yeah, you don't mess with the. They animes. care lots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're and serious about their anime. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do this character named Hidon in Naruto, who's the most despicable, evil, mm -hmm. depraved character ever. So of course he's fun to play. What does he yeah. sound like? Uh, Hidon actually, he kind of sounds like me, but just an incredibly Creep. cocky version A of cocky, me. Right. Creepy version. If I were also it. homicidal, oh. yeah. yeah, and had an extremely short fuse. You know, he gets wow. mad a lot, mm -hmm. and he 
kills a lot of people. And of course, it's on Disney XD. Oh my God. Or it was no. originally, and then I yeah. think they moved it. Yeah. You know, they realized, yeah, this is a bit strong. Well, that's what the X is for. <laughs> yeah, I thought, yeah. Did X they realize is like, you know, this yeah. is like triple X? Well, it's not, I don't think this is Disney triple nudity, XD. But it's just really, it's just really it's intense, intense yeah. show. But yeah, like, I don't do very many conventions, or I didn't. I'm going to step into that world a little bit more, I think, yeah. in the future. But. People at the conventions love that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, do he done into my phone and do his laugh and all that. And it's like, they're, they're yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. into yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I have to, I have to take you here, man. I because know, okay. you love it. One of your, <laughs> one of your incredible talents um, is your ability to uh, impersonate. Yeah, that's, you that's, are that's a kind master of oh, I thank you. impersonator. Thank you. And there's no way that we're going to let you leave this okay. without okay. showing our All right. audience out there could, some of your freaking A-list impressions. Well, like, they're not like necessarily your typical. Um, right. Yeah, but Let's but see. you also have there. You can also find this on YouTube, you guys. Um, yeah, I did a few. I I have friends who are always telling me, look at this guy. This guy does like 80 impressions, and it's in one minute, and he's got all yeah, these cuts yeah. in there, and you should do one of those. I said, I used to do that on stage. I'm sick of doing that. Yeah. You know, but I thought finally, after somebody asking me for the umpteenth time, I thought, all right, fine. I'll put a small one together, and I put together like some of the more offbeat ones, yeah. you yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, like his yeah. Chuck, Chuck Liam Neeson. Chuck loves I love Liam, Liam Neeson. He loves I've Liam never heard Neeson anybody movies. really, really do him. Yeah. And when I heard it, you do it. I was like, oh my gosh! Yeah. Like yeah. he freaking nailed that. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing about Liam Neeson is this: you have to grow about four inches in your own mind, Chuck. Then you have to be ready to kill a man with your own bare hands, like he was a wolf in a movie. And that's that. That's so good. Oh, thank you. Good. Yeah, I so love good. that. I love that. Can um, I can I throw a couple other at you? Sure. Give me um, a what about uh, M Matthew McConaughey? Is McConaughey or high? McConaughey. McConaughey. Right. There you well, go. Well, he may say hi to you. He probably know. says hi. And yeah, that's the thing about Matthew is, uh, I mean, he's even more laid back than I am. I tell you what. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, he does it. Sure he's got those weird they asses. Look like he sort of. You yeah, I mean, you got to put a couple of dimples in your face. Yeah. And, uh, did you go out and buy care. a Lincoln? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, one of them there, Continentals, and I just started having monologues with myself. Uh, yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Ah. Yes, I. Uh, uh, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take some, uh, uh, some weird pauses. And, uh, and we're gonna get quiet, and then oh, uh, something else I'm gonna do is uh, is uh, is just is, is uh, I'm gonna ramble, but but it's gonna sound incredibly erudite because uh, I, in addition to that, I'm very well spoken. So. It's so good. <laughs> you just have to enjoy. I know it's so good. Yeah, 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 I mean, that's the way I like to do it. So good. What about Antonio Banderas? <clears throat> well, the thing about Antonio Banderas is uh, you have to be very quiet. I mean, you could be louder, you know, like a Spaniard. You, you could do that, but uh, but he's, he's a, yeah he, he is a more sultry if you can. I, that is how uh, I like to talk to my wife who is uh, from Venezuela. <laughs> it, uh, but I have to pretend I'm uh, from España. See, so there is a, a cultural divide, but we are still uh, you know very much uh, connected. So you good, can, you can imagine. <laughs> oh, that is so good, man. Thank you. Any other like favorites that you really like? Oh, your Michael Caine is pretty freaking great. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> the best Michael Caine you can possibly see is on the trip. That's with Steve Coogan and, um, oh God, I'm going to forget the other guy's name. But it's a great sort of documentary, sort of movie, and they're doing dueling Michael Caines. Oh, wow. And my. it's great. I'm going to imitate their imitation. It's just, right. you're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. She was only, she was only 15 years old. And if you're going to do older Michael Caine, your voice has to shake. That's the way Steve Coogan does it. But I like to do it from victory. He's talking to Frank Stallone. No, not Frank Stallone. The one with the career. No, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Hatch, stay on the bloody line. I can do it better when I shout. That's right. Oh He's giving me God. two, but if you're Michael K, oh, that no. means something else altogether. You're going to have to blur that out. That is out of this world. Well, you're, 70, your freaking Michael face, K. like you, you look like him. Because I, I used to do these on stage and you kind of sell it. Yes. yes. Like yes. I do, I would do Peter O'Toole on stage. Yes. Like a Charlie Rose yeah, would yeah. interview Peter O'Toole. Yes. <laughs> Every question he gets asked, his answer has to do with alcohol. Right. It's like, Peter, how do you prepare for a role? 
Well, that's a very good question, Charlie. <laughs> And the first thing I like to do is to fill an above-ground swimming pool with bourbon. And then I have my script laminated, and into the bourbon I go with a pair of swimming chunks. And when all the bourbon is gone, I feel as though I've got a handle on the character. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, so oh, good. I want to pee myself. Bananas. Well, clean up oh. on set. Hey, Chris. Yes, Jack. Um, do you audition for job still, or did they just give you the, the uh, jobs? On a silver I audition, platter. Yeah, right. <laughs> Would that were true? No, we all still audition. Even I know. Even I, just, I just like yeah, asking I know, yeah. you guys That's that. a common question, too. I think people probably just think that. They think well, we live in solid gold houses yeah. and are ferried well, home by limo. And yeah. yeah, I want yeah. everybody to know that even the pros, no matter what level they're at, they yeah. audition for mm -hmm. stuff. We grind know? it out. We're grinding. Yeah, you're grinding it out. Exactly. This is, this is the, yeah, I mean, I, I'm a lunch pail guy. Yeah. I, I send in auditions every day. And the booking ratio is very small because the volume is so big. Yeah, now I mean, let me ask you, yeah. was the booking ratio once upon a time, mm. in, for you anyways, was it higher? And you now know, it's a little lower? Or I have no idea because I try not to think about the ones I don't get because they right. vastly outnumber the ones you do get. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for the jobs I do have. Like, um, some jobs, they last for years and it's one audition. Right. You know, yeah. I've been doing stuff for Domino's for nine years. Wow. And it was one audition. Mm -hmm. And it was at 4.50 p.m. on a Friday. I lived in Brentwood at the time and I had to be at uh, Voicecasters in Burbank. On Friday at 4.50 p.m. I thought, that's the last place mm -hmm. I want to have to drive to. But I drove to it because I thought, you never know. I had one line in the audition. And I read that and I booked it and I've been doing that for nine years, and it's just one audition that went well. You wow. know, out of I don't know how many I had that week, fifteen yeah. or twenty. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, you you never know which one is going to be the one that clicks. If I go back and look at the things I booked, I can't always remember what I did for the audition or what yeah. I was thinking. If yeah. I so, knew, are you a, a harsh critic of your work, or do you kind of just do? <sighs> it's like, funny. Go in and get out and move on. If I'm at the agency and there's a booth director directing me, I'll go in and I'll usually get it in one take, maybe two. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I'm done. I'm completely happy with it. And if I'm at home, seven, eight, nine takes because I'll go, eh, I could do better. I could do better. I could do better. Mm -hmm. I think that happens to all of us. And yeah. what do you, you want it to be perfect? for? I just, it's a feel. I just like to imagine if I was the casting director and I was listening to that, would I like it? But yeah. you don't. You know, you they'll know. give you the breakdown, yeah. but you don't know if that's yeah. really what no. they're going to go with. Mm -hmm. Because I'll remember certain parts, I'll see it on TV, and I'll think, that's not what they were asking for. They changed their mind. Right. You know, yeah. or the specs somebody came in and so blew them away with the different take, they thought, totally. forget what we wanted. Yeah. That's what we want. Yeah. yeah. They don't know what they want yeah. until they yeah. hear it sometimes. That's, that's probably the way we would all be in that job. Totally. It's a tough job. It is. So yeah. at this point, you know, mm -hmm. hundreds of, hundreds and hundreds of, jobs later and thousands of auditions later, mm -hmm. are you pretty much um, fine-tuned with, I go with my gut and mm -hmm. I don't I think you guess? have to. Yeah, I mean, I've tried second-guessing myself and it's usually the same result as going with my gut. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the rare thing where if they want something uber-specific, then you can be uber-specific with your read. But basically, they shotgun it out there. Yeah. And the fine-tuning happens on the day. You yeah. know, I did something for the movie Chappaquiddick, which is out now. And I read um, just a couple of different lines with a Boston accent. And when I went in to do the gig, I did it with an ADR group. And then they separated me for that one thing. And that's when they started to tweak. All right, try this, try this, try this. I didn't have the ability to do that for the audition. I gave right. them one thing that I thought I could do well. They heard it and thought, okay, that's what we need. And we can work with them from there. So... As specific as you want to get, uh, I think when you get too specific, you're giving them less than you think you're giving them. If you get tied into one kind of read, you're going all out with that. That's great. That might work. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to let them know that you could go either way. Put yeah, in more than one take if you can. Yeah, yeah, if you can do more than one thing and if they say it's okay, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, give them more than one way to, to think of you doing the job. Mm -hmm. Do you clean your auditions up? I do. do I'll, I'll like take that, some or? breaths that, you know, if I'm at home and I know I've got the uh, the time, I'll 
I'll, I'll take a good breath so I can get through a long piece of copy where you can tell they don't want you breathing yeah. mm-hmm. in the midst of it. So yeah, I'll clean that up because why let them have to wade through that? You know, sure. why, why leave it for them to yeah. do it? So yeah. I give them something as pristine as possible. Yeah. yeah. I think it can only help. Yeah. Good. You're a good boy. I try. It's good. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. good. He's cleaning up his act. <laughs> right. Um, <clears throat> so your brothers, you have a very mm-hmm. creative and artistic yeah, three group brothers. of siblings. Mm-hmm. And you guys, um, is it with one of your brothers that you're creating? Mm-hmm. My brother Dave. Yeah. Yeah, my older Hi, brother Dave. Dave. Hey, Dave. Um, yeah. What are, you, what are you guys working on? What's the... Well, we have a little side hustle. Mm -hmm. I like to call uh, edgy brothers. Edgy brothers. Yeah. And, you know, we're edgerly and we thought, ah, we'll we'll try and be a little bit edgy with what we create. So originally, like my brother's a very talented artist. I always like to say, as good as I am with voices, that's as good as he is with graphic design, with sculpting, with Mm -hmm. animation. He can do all of that. Mm -hmm. So we originally created something for Kickstarter. We created a deck of cards because apparently... You can design a deck of cards and Bicycle, the U.S. playing card company, will print them for you if you give them enough money. Mm. And so people go on Kickstarter and they design these decks of cards and they get funding for it and then they boom, they go have Bicycle make them. So we did a few decks of cards that did pretty well and then we've sold all those. And when you have a physical product, you've got to store it, you've got to inventory it, you've got to do wholesale deals, you've got to ship to buyers. And we thought, well, enough of that. We like to create. We don't like to deal with all that other stuff. Yeah. So we finally have settled on just making digital content. So mm-hmm. my brother is an animation whiz. He found a good animation program. I'll record these voices. I'll email them to him, and he'll animate to them. So we came cool. up with this one-minute series of clips we call Happy Hour. And I asked my brother, what's the easiest thing for you to animate? And he said, something with no arms or legs. Because <laughs> that's the least amount of movement yeah. possible. Yeah. So I thought, all right, well, what about what about glasses and cups and things? He goes, perfect, we'll do that. So he just put <laughs> mouths on these glasses, and it's these bar glasses <laughs> talking to each other. And one of them sounds like Jeff Goldblum. One of them sounds like Harvey Firestein. One of them oh sounds goodness. like Gary Busey. Like the, the beer is Gary Busey. The Collins glass is, um, is Jeff Goldblum. The hurricane glass where you put pina coladas and fruity drinks right. is Harvey Firestein. <laughs> we have a shot glass that sounds like Martin Scorsese. Ah. They talk really fast. He goes from subject to subject, and then he, then he changes his mind every now and then. Somebody drinks, and he puts them back down, and they got to get filled up again before he talks some more. You know, kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. And we just have them all interacting with each other, and we do these quick one-minute clips, and we put them up just on YouTube for people to enjoy, and we have, like, the not-safe-for-work version, right. which is just on Patreon, and we don't really have anybody supporting us at the moment because I've barely talked about it. Yeah. yeah. But we put it up on Patreon, and we would love to be able to generate some support so we can just pay for being able to make them. What's the Patreon? Yeah, so tell uh, people how they can start to support you. you. Yes, go, uh, I guess it's on Patreon. It's yeah. Edgy Brothers. Edgy and Brothers, And if you just okay. look up Edgy Brothers, it should take us to our yeah. page. But Happy Hour is the name of the series we do. But Edgy Brothers Presents is really kind of the name of the series right. we give it. Right. Because at some point, we'll do a few episodes of that and then we're going to pivot and do a different animation idea. Because, you know, like anybody, my, my brother likes to try something new. So we're thinking about doing something with, like, animals and maybe Mm -hmm. do a podcast style with animals. That's cool. Yeah, and whatever voices I send him, he's going to animate. And we just sort of like it to be this living, breathing thing. This is what we're going to pivot to. But the point is we want to be able to think of voices to do, write something for them. I send it to my brother. He animates it. Boom, we put it up online, and let's see if anyone wants to support us doing totally that. Totally cool. It's Beautiful. that family. Yeah. Keep it in the family, man. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. And, and to be able to generate contact and, and, and nurture your creativity is fantastic. That's, to me, the best thing is that yeah. you can decide what you're going to put up there, and you can go straight to people who like what you do. Put yeah. it up online. Let them find it. And if they wanna, if they wanna support you. You can support totally. us for a dollar a month. Now, yeah, is does it. that only live mm-hmm. uh, on Patreon, or does it also live on YouTube? You can find episodes on YouTube once they've been out for a week or two. We put the clean version on YouTube. Yeah. Then we keep the not safe for work, not safe for work version on Patreon, Patreon, where you have to, you have to kind of support us to see that. Exactly. You know, like okay. again, a dollar a month. That's you know, the juicy stuff. Really it's a dollar, dollar a month. That's, it's not yeah, even a dollar, dollar, dollar. dollar. Come a dollar on. a month. Pick it up. Hey, why don't we help him out? Him yeah. and his brother. Yeah, why the not? The Edgy Brothers. Yeah. 100 pennies. <laughs> For a buck a month, you can see right? all the stuff we've done. Love That's it. so cool. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It's great. Thank you. It's fun. 
Hey, Chris, what do you think are some of the keys to your longevity besides mm. your awesome talent? Why, thank you. Mm -hmm. And your wife's fashion sense for your shirt. Yeah. And your wife's fashion sense. She picks it out, then I take it to the tailor and say, cut it to give me muscles, and boom, <laughs> we're off. Put a few extra pads, here and there. Yeah, little pads, a few exactly. pads, few little... Um, yeah. I honestly wouldn't be doing anything else. Um, I, this is all I... It's not all I can do, but it's what I want to do very, very badly. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be a creator until the day I die, because that's who I am. My yeah. uncle's a psychologist, and he used to tell me, don't be an artist. You are an artist. Yeah. It doesn't take any effort to be an artist. That's who you are. Every breath you take, that's who you are. That's who you guys are. You guys are artists. I hang out talking with you. You know, I can tell. You know, this is what you do. And you have to be around it. And your tribe is other artists. Yeah. Other people who rock out, people who dance, people who do all those things. Yeah. That's my tribe. That's who I am. That's who I hang out with. And I mix it up with civilians all the time. I get along with everybody. <laughs> yeah. But there's a disconnect. I don't quite get them and they don't quite get me because they go to a job that can, for them, sometimes be a chore. But sometimes they go to a job that they feel in their bones the way I feel what I do. Mm -hmm. There are people who are accountants and they feel it in their bones. Yeah. And that's what they do. Yeah. And they've never worked a day in their lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So longevity is... I stuck with it because even when I wasn't making any money doing it, it's what I wanted to do. And if I was in it for results only, I probably would have quit. Yeah. I mean, it's authentically it's a, who you are. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when I, like, my wife got to go see me do a job where they didn't quite know what they wanted, but they'd already worked with me. And they said, we're fleshing this character out. All this session is going to be is us throwing ideas at you. And my wife is a musician. And I told her later, I said, that was jazz, what mm -hmm. you saw. Because they said, try it with this accent. Okay, try it from this part of the country. What if he's this age? What if he's that age? What if he's feeling this or that? And I loved it. They were paying me to go to acting class. Yeah. I mean, and I walked out of there. I, I fairly flew out of there yeah. on, on a cloud because mm -hmm. they paid me and I got to do the thing that I would do anyway. Yeah. So... My longevity is solely due to the fact that I don't want to be doing anything else. Good I'm always you, going to be man. performing somewhere, somehow. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. really good. Yeah. 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 And I think anyone who's looking to get into it, you know if it's what you want to do. Yeah. You're going to, because you're going to take a pounding. Mm -hmm. Even after you've quote unquote made it, even after you've had a year where you finally qualified for insurance, mm -hmm. or maybe you finally got enough money together to put down on a condo or a house or something and you're living like an adult, Thinking, yes, I've made it. And then the next year, it's going to be brutal for some reason. You can't get arrested or whatever. Right. And you're going to think, wait, I thought I had it. It's like, no, you have it. You still have it. It's yeah. never going to go away. But the way the industry responds to you may change from year to year. Mm -hmm. right. But if you can deal with that, if you can deal with that uncertainty, you'll, you'll never quit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because it. that's who you are. That's it's who you like are. It's like it, not breathing. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what it is for you. So yeah. good. Yeah. 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 Let's hear some more impressions. No, I'm just kidding. Um, um, we <laughs> come on! We have a mystery question for okay. you. Okay. Oh, boy. Mr. Edger. <sighs> you can pick it from anywhere in the deck. Thin to win. You can. Thin to win. <laughs> can you read it in one of your favorite characters? Okay, let's see. What would or be... one of your least favorite characters. Yeah, one of my least favorite characters. <laughs> no, or an imitation kidding. of a friend that you like? <laughs> hmm. I will read this as my sophomore year history teacher in nice. college. Oh. Ah, would you rather meet your great-great-grandparents or your great-great-grandchildren? Somehow I fell asleep in his class, by the way. <laughs> Could you? He sounds like a. I know. Wow. How do you make it's history like, boring no, you with that voice? Used but he his voice it. for some product. No, no. no. One day. Oh, he's got One day, be one day some... that audition's gonna land. Oh, oh and... he's gonna be somewhere. Okay. Some... That's hysterical. I don't know if he's lucky. He clearly he's... made an impression on you. Impression on you, <laughs> not necessarily in the history realm. I know. Realm. I know because I could have pulled out any celebrity, but no, this guy yeah. deserves to be heard. Yeah. You know, he we does. We love him. He's great. Yeah, exactly. Do we like the question? Wow. That is an amazing question. Would you rather meet your great-great-grandparents or your great-great-grandchildren? Mm. You know what? I'd rather meet my great-great-grandchildren. Mm. I can read about my great-great-grandparents, you know, and maybe know them somehow. But they've already passed their genes on to me, so 
I'm already carrying them. He's exactly. such a good dad. Yeah, but I want to meet your... my great great grandchildren, yeah. and I want them. I want them to tell me how's it going. Yeah, you know, what's the world like? Mm-hmm. You know, what do you like? Because maybe I'd have something to pass on to them. It's like, what do you like? What's and I wouldn't. I'd ask them two questions. I'd say, what are you enjoying doing? What's giving you a hard time? What's bothering you? Mm-hmm. And whatever they're enjoying, I'd say, good, good, good. Tell me more about that. Tell me what you love about that. Tell me, you know, don't ever forget that. And then whatever's bothering them, we'll 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 get that sorted out. You know, we'll give them the right attitude about that. Yeah. You know. So yeah, grandchildren. Great, great. Fantastic, man. Mm-hmm. You're good people, Chris. Edgley. You are good peeps, dude. When, when I'm on Thanks camera. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Absolutely, for having such me. A and, and I gotta say, to man, right from the freaking moment that we, that, well, I mean, you guys have known each other for a little bit, right? A little bit, yeah. Um, but we just met for the first time mm-hmm. over at the office, over yeah. at the at CESD. Yeah, but you're and, one of those guys. Everybody warms up to you. Well, everybody say, warms yeah. up to you. But no, yeah. I mean, like instantly, there was like when we left, I was like, wow. What a freaking cool guy, yeah. man. Oh, because my life is charmed. Yeah. I was, no, because yeah. right away you were like, hey, uh, why don't you guys come down to this thing and blah, blah. And, I, sure. and you were uh, like instantly giving us gifts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? great. Which was so cool. Thank well, you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, look, people have done it for me. And I do it for other people, and and you just that's that's make the world go round. Well, I mean. now we have your fantastic journey <laughs> on the internet forever. Absolutely, yes. Chris Edgley, okay. ladies and gentlemen, go Thank check you. out his work. Go Chuck check out his Patreon page. Thank you. Give him lots of dough, mm-hmm. and Edgy we'll brothers. see you guys Always next time. Edgie Brothers yeah, presents. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and Chuck and Stacy. <laughs> hey, this is Chris Edgley, and I just got buzz with Chuck and Stacy, and so can you. Not really. But, you know, you can if you watch, but you can't be here. That's for me. They want me to say something funny after that. Do you want me to ABC it? I can give you three different voices. I got nothing. I got nothing. Uh, Proper mic technique with Chris Edgley. Don't shout your voice! Just read it the way you would normally read it. And then on-camera technique is don't let your eyes cross. Has it happened? (laughs) Your lens No on-camera for me. Well, that concludes our wonderful two-part episode with the awesome Chris Edgerly. So what Love a cool him. guy, man. So, mm-hmm. so, so cool. Go out and support his stuff, man, because he's really, really a great guy. Yes, and uh, leave your comments below for us. Absolutely. And follow us all on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a, a little, little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.